Welcome back to the world's greatest. Oh man, my chalk just broke it. <sighs> Going through this pretty quickly. That green, gross. All right, what was I saying? Welcome back to the world's most professional Android tutorial series. This episode, we're gonna be talking about parameters in the context of the on-click event handler. So that was a lot of words, so. Oh, this is the gross chalk. I don't know, there's like two types of chalk. Like, this is the good kind, but I mixed them in here because I'm stupid. Here, this is the good kind, there we go. All right, so we have something like this. Public, we're making a method by the way. Void, and we can name it whatever we want. We'll call it toggle. And we didn't really, we, we kind of ignored this part a little bit in the previous episode, but now I want you to write out this or type it out if you're typing. View, I don't know, we'll just call it V. Close that parentheses a little closer. Curly brace, curly brace. And then you can put your code in here to do whatever you want the method to do, to toggle the color, toggle whether it's active or whatever. Now this here, again, is the input, and the technical term for it is a parameter. So we have one parameter. And that one parameter is called V. So the identifier, or the name of this parameter, is V. And what exactly is this? Well, when, you, when we have a button, and we set the on click, to something like toggle. Well, what happens here is when we click it, this method is executed and this button itself is assigned to this variable. So when we click this button, V refers to this button here. Now, how does this work? Because this is a visual thing. It's a button, this is just a letter. Hmm. Uh, how's that work? <laughs> well, when we have this as letter here, it's actually just a name to represent an object. So I don't want to go in like a whole, I don't want to get off topic too much with object oriented programming, but let me just give you like a little snippet real quick. We have classes and we have objects. So classes kind of define structures. They're like the cookie cutters and then the objects are the actual cookies that you make. So they're instances of these classes. So the class here is view. The object here is V. So V is an instance of this view object. So when we see a button like this, it's actually just a visual representation of some entity in memory known as an object and we, give, we, we get a reference to it and name it V here. So that means we can work with this button in code through this variable V. And the variable's type is of view. So that's a lot of information. We're going to go through a hands-on example of this in the next episode. So don't quit yet. Not yet. Wait till like after next episode, then you can quit. All right, so inside of code, we can say something like V and then use dot notation, so v dot, and then we'll get access to a whole bunch of different things related to this button. So do you remember in the visual editor all the attributes you can set on the right hand side there? Depending on if that's where you set it up. You, by default on the right hand side there? Well you can access these through the object reference to this button. Because these are this is now referring to this button here. So for example, we could do something like get ID and IDs drive me bonkers because you I can never remember if they're all ca if it's all capital or if the first letter is capital or, or none of its capital so I'm just gonna take a little peek and dot get yeah I got it right yeah so this is is a way that we can get the ID and then we could assign it to to an integer or use it or whatever. So that's where we're getting into some of the more coding stuff. Whatever you want to do with that get ID, 
the ID value, you, you can treat it as if it's just any other integer. We could also do things like modify the button so we could say v dot set enabled. And we could set this to false. Actually, this is a, yeah, there we go. We could pass in the value false, boom. Now the button is like grayed out and you can't click it. So if you want it to be like a one-time button, like activate, and then it's like grayed out and you can't click it, that's how you do it, I think. Just wanna check. <laughs> yeah, so set enabled, and then, yep, it takes a one parameter, or I guess in this situation it's an argument, the thing you pass into a parameter when you're invoking a method, this is known as an argument. So it takes one argument and it's a Boolean, true or false. So that's how we can disable that button, make it no longer clickable. So pretty much any of the visual stuff you would do with the button, you could also do it in code and you get the reference to that button because it's passed in here. Now, here's the cool thing. All right, let me clean up some of this junk here. All right, so let's say you have two buttons, all right? Not one button, but two buttons. All right. And you want both of these, when you click them, either one, you want that specific button to be disabled. Well, we create one method and we can set it as the on-click handler for both of them. And because that parameter, each time we click one, excuse me, each time we click one of these buttons, that parameter is going to have the, the value of whichever one we clicked. So the first time, let's say we click this one, V here is going to refer to that button. So it'll be disabled because we say V dot set enabled equals, set enabled false. I don't want to type it, I don't want to write it out. So it's specific to that button because we're not, we're not, we're uh, not being specific to which button is being disabled. We're using a general uh, variable here that changes based on which button we click. So it's not like we're saying, hey, the button with the ID of 12, set it to disabled. That would be specific and then it would only work for one button. So by being general, we basically made this, this method here, this event handler, more effective and it can work for any of the buttons. So try it out, go into your editor and create a method and set a parameter that looks like this. View V, you can name it whatever you want. You can name it passed in, you can name it button, but just V, just cause it's kind of similar here. And then just say V dot, and look at all of the different stuff you can do. And depending on which button you click, depends on which button is affected. If you click this one, that button's gonna be affected. If you click this one, that one's gonna be affected. So hopefully all that information makes sense. Now I know it is very fluffy, but that's because I like to go over the concepts face to face, face to camera here. So then when we go and type stuff out, it actually makes sense because you're able to tie the, the code to these concepts that we just covered in this video. It's a more effective way of teaching, trust me. I, I know because I'm like pff, really good at this stuff, right? No, I'm just playing. But I, I believe this is the most effective way to learn. You, you focus on the concepts first and then you go apply the, the code and they'll click and it'll make sense. So thank you guys for watching. Check out the next video just to get some hands on for this and be sure to subscribe.